three will continue. So live on YouTube, and this is going to be game one of the third series of round one. So it's going to be Universal Pirate Swan versus Alter Abuse. So Black Swan is kind of the flagship of that first fleet. Hai Peng, flagship of the other fleet. So did some fleet review this morning a little bit, figured out some plus five selection decisions and whatnot, but we'll jump right into the setup. So I'm going to do, there's two pirate ships in the Alter Abuse fleet and only one. There's like less, you know, evil faction or whatever in the Universal Pirate Swan fleet. So they're going to be white uh, by default. And then Alter Abuse is going to be the black die uh, by default. So see who goes first. It's going to be the Alter Abuse Fleet goes first. Okay, so island selection. Neither has Mysterious Islands to place, so we don't really need to do uh, random island selection. So Alter Abuse is going to go with the first one up here. And for distances, it's going to be Alter Abuse... They want Hai Peng with her total speed of LS LS per move action. They want her to be able to get from one island to another in one action. So they generally want minimum distances because that max speed without a double action is just barely farther than 3L. On the other hand, the Black Swan fleet, they want islands about 4L apart because uh, she can move 6S, which is slightly more than 4L with two actions. If she gets an extra action from Lord Micron, which they anticipate getting probably just about every turn of the game. So, so they want them about 4L apart. Grab my tool from Red Goat here. They're gonna go, I'm gonna go southwest of this island, the first one. I'm gonna plop it right there, 4L there. And then Alter Abuse sees that. They're, re they're reasonably happy with that because they don't want islands too far away from each other. So they're going to go 3L down here for their second choice. And then pick out another one to put 4L away from. I'm going to go 4L away from the first one in this case for the Black Swan fleet. So they're going to go a little bit farther up here. I'm going to go 4L right there and now second to last selection is where you start to think about the meta a little bit more potentially so ultra abuse uh they're gonna they're gonna pick one all right so they're gonna they go first so they're they get their home island picked for them first and um because of that, they want to gamify this at least a little bit. So let's see here. So they anticipate the other fleet potentially putting them far away. They do have a high pang, so the Pirate Swan fleet might not really care if they're far away or not. I think they're going to go, I think, and also they're kind of filling up the setup where I don't think they can place an island 6L away with this ocean size. Even up here isn't going to be that bad for them. So, so I think as a result of that, I think the the ultra abuse fleet they're going to kind of go more in the middle here, and uh, yeah, I think they're going to be okay with that. So, because High Peng with her speed, and Micron, all right, so that's three L. She's going to be able to get to almost any islands almost all the time. So they can actually go a little bit closer. This one is 3L right there. And then it might be a tiny bit more. Yeah, it's a tiny bit more than 3L to those two, but it's it's really close. So they like that placement for their, their last island that they place. And then the last island placed will be by Universal Pirate Swan. And they're probably going to go 4L down here. They could go up here and place... The high peng fleet farther away, but um, let me think about this. So yeah, that's where this is where it gets kind of crazy um, for the island meta. 
of course, there's no events. Neither fleet knows if the other one is using events or Hidden Cove and stuff like that. These fleets haven't seen each other, so they don't have any history of playing each other and getting experience. It might not, funny enough, it might not matter that much. So they go here, it's only going to be a little bit more than 4L, or they could keep to their 4L placement and go kind of down here. They might go in the corner and do a little bit more than 4L. Um, because they get to choose the home island of the altar abuse fleet. So they might pick it to go here. So, yes, yeah, so that one's a little more than 4L. Yeah, I think they're going to go in this corner here. So it's still similar to their 4L distance, but they're going to put it a little farther away because they're probably going to pick that to be the home island of the high peng fleet. So, okay. So now we get to terrain. So both going to propose a number. So I'm going to do a quick review of what they want, essentially. So Alter of Use is generally interested in placing fog banks and reefs because they have they only have small ships. They see the Black Swan starting out in the other fleet. So a reef, some reefs could be good. They're thinking, so if they go first, they're thinking a few fog banks and a few reefs, probably maybe like two or three fog banks and two or three reefs. I think they'll probably propose five terrain. And then Universal Pirate Swan, they're thinking about fog banks and Sargasso Seas and possibly Whirlpools if there's a clear combat advantage over the other fleet. So they're kind of thinking, yeah, and they're, they go second. So they're kind of, I think they might want more terrain because they go second. I think they do want, I think Universal Pirate Swan will want Whirlpools in play. Like at least two, maybe three. So they're going to, I think as a result of that, they're going to probably vote for more. So I think, so Ultra Abuse, they go first. So they're going to vote for five. They're going to vote for five. And then Universal Pirate Swan is going to vote for six. So since they don't match, we're going to roll off. So once again, white for uh, Universal Pirate Swan and then black for Ultra Abuse. So tie there. Let's see what. Okay, so black wins this time once again. So Ultra Abuse gets what they want on terrain. So five terrain placed per player. And then player one's going first. So they'll place one. So Ultra Abuse. Just going to think about this for a minute here. So they place five. They want reefs and fog. They're going, if they're going first, they can kind of anticipate maybe getting placed here or there for their home island. So I think based on that, they're going to plop a fog bank right there in between those two islands. So, and then Universal Pirate Swan, since they go second, they have, they have the advantage of knowing where they might want to put the Ultra Abuse Fleet. So they, they think they probably will put them there. Um, either way, they want to put, they want to put some whirlpools near where they might get placed. They kind of think they're going to be not in the same spot. Um, so they're going to put a whirlpool, they're going to try a whirlpool right there, try to cover their bases and they can even pre-measure too. They can see that black swan, she could, with a second action out of the whirlpool, she could dock at any of those three islands if she comes out of there. So I think they like that placement. All right, so second round of train out of five total is going to see another fog bank go down for the Alter Abuse Fleet. Gonna plop one right there. And there's going to be another Whirlpool placed by Universal Pirate Swan Fleet. And it looks like, yeah, it looks like she'll be able to dock at any of those if she goes through one of those. So another Whirlpool. All right, so third round of train. I think I'm going to start placing reefs for the these reef out there before too long. Uh, probably going to place it in between these, actually, potentially seeding this whirlpool area. Yeah, they can just barely get it. Yeah, nice. They can get it between those two, which might make it harder to come out of the whirlpool and dock there. All right, so got one reef, and then. 
Okay, so now Universal Pirate Swan, seeing the small ships in the other fleet, they do want to they want to place some Sargasso Seas, potentially slow down the High Peng or the Bloody Jewel in that case. So they're actually going to put a Sargasso Sea pass away from where they anticipate putting their home island. Okay, so that's three, three each. So fourth round out of five for the terrain placement. So Ultra Abuse, I think they want to go with another reef. Yeah, they're going to go with one more reef here. I'm going to get, there's a specific shape I think would be good for this spot. Yeah. So they're going to place another reef S away from an island and a whirlpool. I'm going to plop one right there. Get harder to dock there with one action out of the whirlpool. And then, all right, so that's seven. So Universal Pirate Swan gets to pick terrain number eight. I think they're going to go with another Sargasso, actually. Yeah, I think they're going to try one. I'm going to try one down here on the other side of this island. That's away from it. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. And then I don't think either fleet really wants to place an iceberg for like the, the sabotage potential. Ultra abuse is more likely to sabotage, but with the altar, they're kind of they're not playing the long game, but they're they're not a UPS fleet that's trying to get ahead and then potentially sabotage after. So, so I don't think either one is going to place a an iceberg. So so three four so that's eight. So ultra abuse gets to pick their last terrain now. So. Um, they see, they kind of see the writing on the wall that this might be their home island. Um, they could place a whirlpool. Let me think about this because this gets into the terrain meta. They could place a whirlpool somewhere like in here and then be able to pop out. Because they know they have Micron. They could go in there, pop out, and then explore a wild island. So they could, I mean, that's assuming that that would be their wild island. That could change if they put a whirlpool there. but. Um, they couldn't think about if they went there, where would they put Universal Pirate Swan becomes part of the question. And I think they'd probably put them, they don't have, Alder Abuse doesn't have Hidden Cove actually. They could bring in with the plus five, but they're going to go with their default fleet right now, which you can find in the description. And since they don't have Hidden Cove, they're probably more likely to put the enemy far away, or at least as far away as they can, which might be, I'm thinking right here, because they don't, I don't think they can fit. I know this is not a reef, but I don't think they can fit a reef in between that island and that whirlpool. So based on that, they kind of think they might want to put Universal Pirate Swan there for home island. So I'm wondering, they might actually just do another fog bank or a reef. Let me think. Yeah, they might. They might at least experiment with the reef idea. I'm gonna grab one of the smaller ones and see if they're able to place it. In a decent spot as like an obstruction. Uh, but I think I think having to put it S away is going to make it really hard to maneuver this. It's not going to be. I don't think they can place it as an obstacle. It would have to be like in a spot where it's just not going to matter. So therefore, yeah, I think they could. Eh, they could do it here or there. Those are not the worst ideas either, uh, especially if it was a different shape. So they already have, they do have a fog bank there. So yeah, I think that I think they will do one more reef instead of a another fog bank. I think they'd rather try a reef here. So we're gonna grab another one of those. Let's grab this different shape here. All right, so they're gonna put a reef. I'm thinking they're gonna probably explore one of these two islands on the first turn, most likely. So they might put this reef, make it harder to access one of those islands from the whirlpool and just in general. Could even do it like that. But, nah, it's gonna be hard to fit it S away. All right, I think they're gonna go like that. Yeah, that's fine. All right. So with that, they've placed all their terrain. And then 
So four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and Universal Pirate Swan, of course, gets to place the final terrain. And right after this, they get to pick the home island location of the Altar of Beast fleet. So if they already know they're going there, they could try to sabotage them more with like an iceberg or something over there. But they might just do another Sargasso. They could either do that or another Whirlpool. I think a Whirlpool would be, that could be nasty. Whirlpools, man, I'm, in terms of the meta, I'm starting to think about Whirlpool as being like a huge aid to the, the UPS fleets that have a, a double action ship, kind of like the Black Swan or HMS GT, UPS or the Zeus, UPS 5 with the Zeus. I think they want to put another Whirlpool and then they, they almost cover the entire board if they put a third Whirlpool out here. So they're going to do that. They're going to put one, I guess, SOA. Yeah, I guess they'll place it right there. All right, cool. So that's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's five terrain placed per player. And now we move to choosing home islands. So the last player chooses the home island of the first player. So they're going to stick with what they wanted to do. And they're going to put the Swan Fleet is going to put Ultra Abuse in the southeast. So they're going to have to dock their ships there. And oh, also, so both fleets have a Patagonia. No surprise there for competitive play. So HMS Rye is a proxy for the Patagonia of the Ultra Abuse fleet specifically. And then the regular Patagonia is in the Universal Pirate Swan fleet. So, so now before, of course, before they dock the ships, they can they can think about like where they're gonna put Universal Pirate Swan fleet. So they know Ipeng is probably not gonna reach one of these islands with one action. Yeah, definitely not. If she's got LS, LS, she's going to need both actions to reach an island, which is a little bit unfortunate. But so she'll probably go, that's a tough one. She'll probably go here and try that island on the first turn. I'm thinking she's probably going to start, she's probably going to start there and then measure from starboard bow. Bloody Jewel is probably just going to follow right behind her. And then she'll have on turn two, she might go into that fog bank. Either one of them or both of them might. So I think that looks fine. And now the Ultra Abuse Fleet needs to decide the home island of the first player or the second player, I should say. So they get to decide the home island location um, of the Universal Pirate Swan Fleet. They were thinking about over here. They still like that choice because these reefs could be good against Black Swan, slowing her down a little bit. Yeah, that's actually probably the best choice. So they go, they put them here or here. They're going to have access to a whirlpool right away. At least here, I don't think Black Swan, that's yeah, tight. Okay. I don't think she can get to this whirlpool without going over the reef in one move action. So yeah, so they're going to go, they're going to pop them in the Southwest here. So we'll set up their Patagonia out of harm's way, hopefully. And then Core du Leon. It's gonna set up probably probably right there is fine. And then based on that, Black Swan. So this fleet, Universal Pirate Swan, they do have Hidden Cove. So they can decide which island. The Hidden Cove is measured from the ship. So if they go here, they would go there with Hidden Cove, or if they go here, they'd end up there. I think they'd probably rather do that, especially because. This one, if Hai Peng ends up going here, which is unlikely, then they could slam her for sure. So they're gonna, yeah, they're gonna dock Black Swan right there. So yeah, I think that, I think that setup works good. All right, so now we place crew. So Ultra Abuse would, as the first player, they would technically place crew first. So they have Bratley and Robinson face up on the Patagonia. They've got the proxy deck plate there, and then. So Bratley gives them their plus five, and they're going to bring in five pirate crew. So they're going to bring in a pirate oarsman on the high peng face down, and they're going to bring in four crew for the bloody jewel. So these are basically alter the lowest sacrifice crew, pretty much. That's their purpose. So they've got two explorers, 
and two oarsmen, all pirate, all on the bloody jewel. So, so now they're all set up. So one thing that tells Universal Pirate Swan is that all those crew are one point. So they know that that crew and those four crew are one point each because they brought in five separate crew for the plus five and the zero point crew pretty much have to go face up. So, so they could have only brought in five one point crew basically. Uh, and then that pretty much does it for them, I guess. And then because the fleets for this game, the fleets are sitting with their default setup that you can see on PSM list. Um, for the second game, I might, based on this game, I might do some modifications to the plus five selections because those are modular, unlike the original 40 point fleet. The 40 points are static throughout the tournament. So I had to figure out the plus fives uh, this morning. But so the plus five selections for the Universal Pirate Swan Fleet via their own Bratley on their own Patagonia are three points for Maurice Aristide, who's going to go on the Corps du Lyon face down, and two Pirate Oarsmen one of which is going to go face down the core to start the game, and one is going to start on the home island. So those are their plus five selections. They already had uh, their event, which is a hidden cove face down. And it's worth noting, uh, oh yeah, you can just barely see Black Swan has her oarsman face up because um, you have to have it face up to use the ability. She has five crew, and the oarsman doesn't take up space. They actually have five cargo, but... Captain Jack Sparrow's face down. So I guess they could just to close that there's a link, but they don't really want to do that. They don't really care. So, and they might actually just dump the oarsman on the home island to start the game anyway. So they're just not too concerned either way with that, especially because those crew are likely to be revealed on turn one anyway, especially Captain Jack Sparrow. So placing crew is done. Might be a little more complicated in game two, but we'll see how this game goes first. So next we have placing treasure. So the, uh, Ultra Abuse Fleet, they're going with their default setup. I only have one Pirate Globe, so this uh, scratched one is a proxy for a Pirate Globe, because the other fleet uses one too. So, so that's their Pirate Globe. Markson's map, Maps of Alexandria, uh, Abandoned Oarsman, Ultra the Loa, of course, and then 654 for their coins worth value. And it's really debatable if this is an optimal treasure distribution for the Ultra Abuse Fleet. I think it might not be but I think it's the best shot they have going forward, especially because they, they don't know that the other fleet has their specific UTs, but we'll probably see at least some of them, if not all of them, after this game, and they might adjust their UT contributions for game two based on that. And then the Universal Pirate Swan, they've got three fives for their coins worth value, and then they've got revealers and eliminators, basically. So the globe and the maps to eliminate stuff, uh, to reveal stuff, I should say, and then Karmic Idol and Paretic Codex to t toss stuff out, and then Joe House Dog. So basically, in case the other fleet is using a bunch of negative UTs, they're trying to like minimize that that load on the on the Black Swan because they don't want Black Swan to get hit with natives, missionary plague, all that. So they're trying to trying to knock that stuff out of the game, basically. So do a good. Hopefully, this will be a fair treasure mix. It was kind of I always mix it the same way. Seems like sometimes sometimes it just randomly comes out kind of weird. Last last matchup won't spoil it, but one of the fleets got kind of screwed last weekend by the treasure distribution. I think the better fleet won that series anyway, but it was kind of excessive, I guess you could say. So all right, so four per island as usual, and we'll get started. So the chess clock, I'll have it running, but it's not an endgame condition because that would technically be a house rule, and I'm trying to minimize house rules for this tournament with all the competitive play. But I'll pop it on, and I'm going to have... I'm going to flip it. So the right side, since they're, the Ultra Abuse Home Island is on the right side of the map, they're going to have the right side clock and then left side for Universal Pirate Swan. So almost ready to go. All right. So, uh, I think that's it for setup and prep. Let me make sure uh, there's no, yeah, I don't think there's any any crew that would go on a home island, so it's not right now. There will be once Universal Pirate Swan uh, takes a turn, but that's not going to happen quite yet. So, all right, so first turn, um, we're immediately going to see 
Ipeng Reveal or Helmson and Bartholomew Roberts from Fire and Steel. So she's got these two crew. So Black Bart has the captain ability. So it's going to give her the plus L bonus per the ship ability. And Helmson gives her plus S. So she's going to move in LS, LS. They're also going to reveal, start the timer. Uh, they're also going to reveal Lord Micron on the Patagonia. So all three of her crew are face up now. So Haipeng, and yeah, they see this island is closer to Black Swan. They Now they do see that there's a face down event in the other fleet and they can, they're not fully assuming, but they can anticipate it maybe being Hidden Cove, which would jump Black Swan out here as the nearest unexplored wild island. Um, they could go there and explore it and then it wouldn't be the nearest unexplored, but then they might just warp here and move over there or warp here Whirlpool and come, or I don't know. So I think it's kind of a toss up where they should, where they should go. Um, they like this one too, because they could maybe pop in this Whirlpool next turn. And it's also got close proximity to two fog banks. So, so really it's, it's going to be, it's going to come down probably to the treasure distribution. So if like they find Alter the Loa right now, then they'll probably win. <laughs> but if they don't, then they might not. So it's kind of, honestly, a lot of these competitive games, are arguably determined by the treasure distribution more than anything else. Um, but we'll see how things go. So that's one action. Hai Peng is already way out here. <laughs> and then Micron is going to sacrifice the action of his Patagonia. Give her another action, which he's going to use to move over here. So Black Swan, if she coves there, or if she can't get to that whirlpool in one action, I think she'll be good to dock over on this other side. Yeah, so that's L, S, and then L, and then S here. I think, let me just pre-measure a tiny bit, make sure if she can get to this other island in one action next turn. I think so, just barely. I mean, it's close. I think she's going to dock at like an angle here, so her starboard bow is a little bit farther out. Yeah, I think she would make it there. And then she can make it to that fog bank, that fog bank, either whirlpool. So she's in good shape. She's in a good spot. Uh, at least right now, we'll see how things go. So they're now going to reveal their explorer. So, and they have the treasure trading ability of Bartholomew Roberts Island Treasure Trading. So, all right, here we go. So this is going to be <laughs> this might determine a lot of things in this game. Okay, so no, no altar. So they have, okay, they have the proxy pirate globe, and they have Paratic Codex. So that's going to be interesting. They also have Markson's map. So they're going to they're going to load Markson's map. Well, actually, wait. Let's not. So, so this is where it gets interesting. So I'm just going to lay these out. I had to peek at the code just to make sure. I pretty much already know the rulings. But I'm just going to look it up just to make sure. So, so Pirate Globe and uh, Paratic Codex interact in an interesting way. So if the globe is applied first, all treasure is revealed on wild islands, and then all face-up unique treasure is removed from the game. If karmic idol, or I should say the, the codex, if the codex is applied first, the uh, globe is removed and face down treasure on wild islands is not revealed. So they're gonna, they would trigger, realistically, they would trigger the codex first. So basically, if they if they trigger the pirate globe, they're going to reveal altar of the Loa, which is the whole point of this fleet is to abuse that UT, and then it would get eliminated by the Codex. But if they apply the Codex first, unfortunately, it takes out Marksman's map, but at least they preserve the altar, which is somewhere out there. They don't know where yet. They would love to find with Marksman's map. So I guess the other thing they can do is trade away the Codex. So they might. They might do that. Um, they're probably going to load the five realistically. I think they might. Yeah, I think there's a chance that if they trade away the codex, they'll find um, the other eliminator, the karmic idol. But <laughs> they don't know it's out there because they don't know what the other fleet contributed. So I think they want to. Let me think about how they want to do this because this really this could really matter, especially in terms of where they trade it. So the codex. The Codex is one of the white UTs that takes um, all face-up treasures out of the game. So let me just look at the 
ability text real quick. Actually, it might not be in the booklet. Okay. Yeah. So if they trade, they know if they trade the codex here, it looks like Black Swan might be gunning for that island soon. So, and then if there's also a revealer like the globe or the maps of Alexandria. So this is where this is this is where game two is gonna get crazy for this this fleet because they didn't know what UT's Universal Pirate Swan contributed. So there's actually four revealers that reveal all treasure in the game. There's two globes and two maps of Alexandria because each fleet put one in, one of each. So so that's insane. So they're finding um I think I guess they contributed the proxy globes. I guess they wouldn't know that yet, but now that they see the codex, that kind of gets them wondering about what the other fleet's UT strategy is. So I don't really want them to flip the codex here, because then, like I said, if they find Black Swan finds Master Alexandria in the codex here, that would, they could use that to wipe the altar. So I think the codex, they're probably going to flip it over here or to the northeast. Um, the thing about the northeast is that would that would be probably their next island that they would um, explore. So they might not they might want not want to do that either. The problem if they don't, it might be closer to Black Swan. So let me see. So first, I'm going to pre measure. See if they can get here. So they can't reach this island with one action next turn. They could get there with both, of course, but. I think they're going to trade here. Um, it's kind of debatable where they'll end up going. Um, let me think about this. Yeah, they want to be able to, they would love to be able to, I guess it doesn't really matter which island they go to potentially. They could get there in one action, but they wouldn't be able to explore both next turn. Is even if, if they go north, they can't get over there. If they go this way, they have to use both actions to dock and explore there. So I think they're going to trade to the northeast and potentially trigger the codex next turn. But they don't really, yeah, they don't want to do that. They don't want to trigger the codex at all. And also, there's no fog bank near this island to hide in. So they're probably, they're more likely to go up here. So therefore, if the altar is revealed, they don't want to go to an island. They, they basically see this island as potentially being the last island that will get explored, maybe. So they're going to trade Codex there. Um, let me look at, I have the coin, but let me just look at something else too in the code. So the way the Explorer action order of operations works is that uh, you look at all treasure without showing your opponents, trade one treasure with a treasure on another wild island. That's what they just did. And now they would reveal them all, uh, unless they can be loaded face down. And then they would load all revealed face up, and then they would apply them. So, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna try that. They might they might have gotten the other another eliminator in exchange, but they're gonna they're gonna risk it. Okay, so the abandoned oarsman. So nothing too crazy. So interesting. Okay. So now the globe will reveal all. So pirate globe. Okay. Interesting. So now they're going to find out where the altar is. So Pirate Globe, when revealed, turn all treasure on all wild islands face up for the remaining of the game, then remove Pirate Globe from the game. So they're going to take this out and they're going to load those two in a second. So the Oarsman is, I think this one's loaded face down. So I don't think they would have to reveal that one. Let me look at the order again. So they revealed the globe. They loaded it, they applied it. Okay. Load face down UTs is at the end. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, I don't really know if the oarsman should be revealed or not, but whatever. To the other player, I mean. So, so now we're going to reveal all treasure on Wild Islands. Okay, there was another maps there, or another revealer. So, maps of Alexandria, Pirate Globe, two fives on that island. And okay, the altar is not here. So altar is in the northeast. Okay, that's good for them. So pirate globe, karmic idol, jailhouse dog, and a five there. 
And then that means the altar of the Loa is in the northeast. Yeah, with the other maps and a 6-4. So it's a pretty crazy island in the northeast. So the problem is the altar is due to be eliminated as soon as this island is explored because that has the karmic idol. So, or this island is explored. If either one of those are explored, the altar is going to go out of the game. Um, so they probably won't be able to use it, but whatever. Okay, interesting. So all is revealed. That's the crazy thing about both fleets contributing both revealer UTs is that like almost no treasure can stay hidden for almost any amount of time, unless you find no revealers in the first island, but we got one. So, all right. So they're going to load the oarsman. Oh, the oarsman would be face down. Let me think about this. So high Peng, she has four cards, faces. They're going to, they're going to flip an oarsman. They're going to flip. Actually, no, they're going to, no, they're not going to do that. They're going to flip the, the abandoned oarsman. So it, so it doesn't take up space per the oarsman ability. And they're going to load the five with it. Marksman's map, they have to load, but they want to. Um, just as like sacrifice for the whirlpools. So, so that way, she's got four spaces taken up. These two UTs don't take up space. Those four. Um, actually, no, she's going to be over on cargo either way because the no stacking rule. So they're going to, I think they're going to leave the oarsman there actually. So. Yeah, they actually have to, they have to, Black Bart, it's it's funny because usually I use Captain Jack Sparrow on the High Peng, and he has a link to all pirate ships, but this is Black Bart. He doesn't have that link. Links to Royal Rover, but that's it. So so they have, she already has four spaces taken up. So she actually has to flip her oarsman just to, uh, just to have it not take up space. So then she's full on cargo. So therefore she can't load, she won't load. She's going to choose not to load the, the abandoned oarsman, and that one can be loaded face down, which is why it's optional, unlike the marksman's map. And the marksman's map um, says once per turn, the ship may look at one face down cargo on any island, but of course now it's all face up, so it's probably not going to be relevant. So, all right, so that was interesting. Okay. Ah, man. Yeah, this is the problem with using relying on the Ultra of the Loa when there's these eliminators in play, like Karmic Idol and Parada Codex, um, they'd have to somehow eliminate both. They'd have to find both before the altar gets revealed, which is tough because there's so many revealers. They're probably going to take their revealers, like their maps of Alexandria, out of play for the second game and just rely on the Marksman's map and stuff like that and just getting lucky, basically. So they do still have an action. So they got Bloody Jewel. They're going to flip her helmsman so she can move SLS and she's going to head out. She's going to kind of go in a general. Um, they got to be careful. They got to be wary of Hidden Cove because Black Swan could maybe strike coming their other direction. So, and they don't even want to trigger that island really. Yeah, that's yeah. Either way, the altar is going to be eliminated on this next turn, I think. So they got to play. So in that case, they have to play for regular a regular treasure win. So their path to victory looks like they have a five here. There's 10 there. And then if they could get one of those fives. All right. So the Helmsman plus S bonus on Bloody Jewel. All right. Yeah, it's good I'm not using the timer as an endgame condition because they would probably be screwed already. <laughs> Uh, I think that's I think that's all they can do. Can't build a fort, so yeah. All right, so Universal Pirate Swan is now able to get in action here. So they don't really have. There's not much debate about what they're going to do. Yeah, they're just going to they're going to flip Hidden Cove. They actually want to get to this island and explore it. I don't know where they're going to dock yet, but because um, they want to they want to get that Karmic Idol triggered because that'll knock out the altar of the Loa. So um, unless they were to use their own, they could maybe use the altar of the Loa. Oh, that's crazy. Um, problem is they would need, 
both actions just get through the whirlpool and that opens up the idea of the hyping being able to go there on their turn and start start the altar chaos so okay so so black swan ah, let me think where she wants to dock so normally high peng would go that way to get to the altar but they're gonna realistically they're gonna explore this island and take it out they should dock where they they should dock where they know they're gonna go on their second action so they know they're gonna use micron on black swan to give her a second action after she trades home a coin at core they can also start playing for their end game so what i mean by that is five plus aristides two is going to give them seven so they could yeah they don't have a they don't have a really easy path to 16 with only two coins because even if they plus up the six that'd only be 15 that'd be that'd yeah, be seven and eight so so they want to dock in a spot where they're gonna have an obvious action a second action because this first action is going to clear this island because they're anticipating obviously they're going to trigger the globe and the idol the idol is going to wipe the altar and the uts i think it's going to wipe that too because that's going to get flipped again and then they're going to load i think they have let me think about this so camjack sparrow links so she has five cargo minus three that take up space or four that take up space so they have a cargo space to load the jailhouse dog or the five they'll load the five or no they're going to trade the five sorry so they'll probably load the dog just because why not they might as well i guess um okay so before so i made a mistake so before before they um do that they're gonna they're actually gonna use the free transfer rules to put their oarsmen the pirate oarsmen on the home island because they didn't have becalmed played against them so so they want that to be able to be traded via Captain Jack Sparrow from the core later in the game for a coin. Because the Black Swan, she doesn't really need the Oarsman. She's about to receive one anyway on this first trade. So I think they're going to use their second action with the Black Swan just to go into the Fog Bank. Because um, they're not going to be able to get, with their second action, they're not going to be able to get to the Whirlpool or any other island or home or anything. So, so I think they're going to go right there. They're going to flip the infamous... 058 Captain Jack Sparrow, and they're also going to flip their Explorer on Black Swan and start the UPS shenanigans. So they hidden coved. Now they're going to redock and mark this island explored. So so they get to see all the treasure. I mean, it's already out there. It's already obvious what it is. So they would apply. So they apply the face up UTs first. So Pirate Globe. Uh, I guess they'd, I guess they'd probably apply that first, reflip the oarsman. I'm not really sure if that matters or if he would still be face down. But and now they trigger the karmic idol, which is really the key to this entire turn, because it's designed to knock out negative UTs. But it, in this case, it's going to screw the strategy of the uh, of the altar abuse leaks and knock out the altar. It's so karmic idol when revealed, remove all face up unique treasure from the game. So none of them have value right now. So, so with those two revealed, it blows up the altar, the maps over there, the codex, and the other maps, and the oarsmen. So, so all those are now gone. So, and I think since ah, this is a weird one, I might have to ask Wolf about this. I think since Joe House Dog is already face up. It would get knocked out as well. Um, I think it has to be. I don't know. And either way, there's no UTs left for the dog to eliminate, so I'm just going to toss it out. So I don't have to ask Wolf about that, though. It's a weird one. So it was already face up when they found it. So I think it has to be eliminated to be the idol. So now, um, Kevin Espera links all pirate ships. So she has five cargo. Uh, minus four that take up space. So she's not going to load the five. She's going to trade it. So they're going to trade treasure on the island for crew on any friendly ship. So they're going to flip it to the core. And now core is going to flip Maurice Aristide. And she's going to explore the home island and unload the five. And with Aristide's ability, it gets plus two. 
and coins go face up on a game like this. So in a two player game. And now we're gonna do free transfer rule twice. So Coeur de Leon is gonna load the face up pirate oarsman as a free action. And Black Swan is gonna load this face down uh, pirate oarsman as a free action at her island. So, and she doesn't need to reveal that one because Captain Jack Sparrow links to all pirate ships. So therefore she has five spaces and five crew. So she doesn't have to reveal the oarsman to use its ability. And now Black Swan, I think she has to use her helmsman. Yeah, that's fine. So Black Swan reveals her helmsman to go into the fog bank. So they still have Bianco's haulers face down, but they might not really need him in this matchup anyway. So we'll see. All right. So overall, they took their, their three actions, hidden coved, got seven gold. Uh, they knocked out the altar. So a good turn by Universal Pirate Swan. So they'll turn it over to the fleet. They don't really see much point in building a fort down there. Maybe a different island, but not right now. All right. So altar abuse is going to try to figure out what to do here. Markson's map's not useful. Um, they got to figure out how they want to play this. So it's going to be tough. Yeah, there's not many coins. Now there's, there's almost no coins in play now. Um, they know they have five here, 10, but they, they need more than 15 to win. And they don't have any bonuses, which is ugly. Um, they can also anticipate the other fleet getting bonuses. That's the problem is if, if the other fleet bonuses both of these, they'd have 21. because so it basically seven per coin times three versus 15. So I think they need to get, kind of feels like they need to get three out of these four, which I think is going to be a tall order. So it's going to be tough. I think might be able to escape, but I don't know. I think she's going to, she's going to be able to drop crew and then go into the fog bank. I think that's probably their best play. Let me just think about this for a minute. So they could whirlpool here, come out here and dock there. I think the best play is to dock here, load coins for crew, and then use the second action to go into the fog bank. And that way they could get home once they get the right roll and they would get home with potentially 15, which isn't enough, but it's close. Um, it's tough. They can't build a fort either because they would maybe build a fort there, but all right. Um, I just don't think there's any point in going to this island. Um, in terms of bonuses, the coin values don't matter too much. They're all pretty similar values. So... Yeah, they can't get they can't get to that island in one move action. Let me make sure they can get to this one. She's like right at the edge there. If I measure from the starboard bow, LS. Oh yeah, they're gonna get there. Okay. Yeah, it's actually a little bit better than I thought. Okay. I think they're gonna do that. I'm trying to think of a better way, but I think it's gonna be a steep uphill climb for them to win. Um, oh, what they can do is trade. Oh, that's perfect. They can trade a four for a five, and then they'd have 16 on the high peng. So they're gonna they're gonna try that. That could be an interesting path to victory. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we gotta at least try. All right. So they're gonna explore here. This is still her first action. So we're gonna trade. So the treasure trading ability of uh, Bartholomew Roberts says, after looking at treasure on a wild island, you can trade any treasure, any one treasure from that island for a random treasure on any other wild island. The ship must load the traded treasure. They're going to have to load whatever they get. So they're going to trade away the four. And normally it has to be random. So you would roll dice, but they're both fives. So it doesn't. It's going to get the same result either way. So they're going to they're going to do that, and then they want to load this too. So they're going to have to do some crew swapping with the explore action. So they already have the four, or they have a five, I should say. So they have to load the five, which could get a tiny bit awkward. So I'm trying to think what they got to drop. So this is the priority of coins, basically. So they're already full on cargo. So they got to drop two of the crew, 
which is really ugly because um, they're going to lose too much speed. Yeah, this is ugly. They could drop. Um, they could drop Black Bart and the Explorer. Man, I guess they'd have to pre-measure. I think it's going to come down to measuring it out. So if they they drop, they trade. I don't really like the Explorer loophole either, which is where you can basically trade the Explorer for uh, for a coin that you load. Let me just see. Yeah, I don't think. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's in the code towards the end um, about being able to swap the Explorer for a coin. Um, if an Explorer action is provided by an Explorer crew, that action ends immediately if you unload that crew. An additional Explorer action will be required to load treasure into the now empty cargo space. All right, so they can't, so based on that, they can't swap. I don't think they can swap the Explorer for a coin. I think it might, I think it might only apply to the, to the islands that you've already explored, but this is the first time they're exploring this island. So additional Explorer action will be required to load treasure in the now empty cargo space. Yeah, so they can't, yeah, that's the ugly part. So they'd have to drop the helmsman. There's no point in dropping the oarsman because it didn't take up space. So if they drop the helmsman and Black Bart, their speed goes down to LSLS. Problem is they're not going to get anywhere. So the hull goes to about there. Yeah, they're not going to get home at that speed, even with Micron doubling it. They could make a break for it and just hope Black Swan goes elsewhere. She might actually. The other fleet has to consider. So both fleets really have to consider the math of how this might work out. So they have seven. If they can plus up both of these, that'd be seven plus six is 13, plus seven is 20. Yeah. Black Swan is basically playing for this island to plus up both coins and end up with 20 total. Alter abuse, unfortunately, with no bonuses and no trading coins home, they're basically playing for 16. Um, but I don't think they're going to get it in time. Um, I think they have to make a break for it, though, because if they don't, Black Swan is probably going to pop out with her first action, go through one of these two whirlpools, and use Micron's second action to come in and slam High Peng. So I think either way, they need to end up in this fog bank uh, this this turn in order to make a break for it um, on their next turn, or once they get a decent fog bank roll. They might have to figure it out either way. So thanks, everybody, for watching. I appreciate the comments and whatnot. Um, does get kind of kind of wild and competitive play. Okay, so they're gonna. I can't dump the explorer. That dump the others for these coins. They have to load the five for Black Bart's ability. Uh, I guess that's another potential rules question: is if unloading Black Bart. Well, they already traded. They already traded, so I don't think that would mess up the loading of the five. And it says it must be loaded, so I think you can dump him to make room for it. Either way, Hai Peng now has three coins and the Explorer taking up space. So unfortunately, she has to lose her crew that double her speed, her overall speed. But they, I think they have to risk it. Oh, the other problem, uh, hang on a second. Their problem is they can't, I don't know if they can reach, I guess they can reach the fog bank just barely. Yeah, it's super close, but yeah. So Micron, yeah, you got to measure from the starboard bow. Um, so she's going to get into this fog bank. They also, thinking about that, they probably would have thought about that in advance and then docked up here. So, so, so if they docked there, it would just make it even easier. Okay. So that's two actions for high Peng. They're just trying to get the 16 home before the other fleet can trade home both of these. Basically, that's basically their, their end game. Um, so now based on that bloody jewel. I actually duck into the fog. She wants to run interference on Black Swan. So she should follow her, I think. And also, if Hai Peng, if Black Swan tries to intercept, she could uh, she could try to assist in a battle. She just doesn't want to be uh, dead meat in case Black Swan comes out when Bloody Jewel is over here. 
just going to be screwed. So they could even go over here. They could they could whirlpool. Bloody Jewel does have a an explorer. They could whirl over here, and then think about trying to explore there to put pressure on Black Swan to do the same, which he's probably going to do anyway. But that'd be an interesting way to put pressure on the other fleet, especially because Bloody Jewel isn't really. She might not really be an asset, even if she fights. Because if she goes LSS into here, she's going to have to come out and then reassist. Yeah. That's a tough one. Um, they whirl. They have plenty of sack fodder to throw in the whirlpool. They have that extra explorer that they don't really need. Um, so. Yeah, I think they want to put pressure on Black Swan to kind of force her to go here. Because if Black Swan, I think it might depend on our fog bank roll too. Black Swan might not be able to explore this island's coming turn. Either way, High Pang is just gonna have to make a break for it. Yeah, I think I think it's a tough one whether or not Bloody Jewel should just hide in the fog in an anticipation of ramming Black Swan when Black Swan comes for High Pang. But I think they actually want to put pressure on the other fleet and try to make it take longer they're gonna like touch the whirlpool in a way that tries to block black swan because then if black swan comes out here she like can't she might not well i think it's gonna work either way let me yeah because if she comes out she's in the fog bank so it doesn't matter where she measures from yeah she can easily get to this island yeah she's not gonna be able to block her but that's okay so so will just go right there then so we'll do the, the whirlpool roll. So black die for alter abuse. So, so that's actually bad in the standard rules. So she'll lose yeah, based on explorer. So nothing, nothing too bad there. All right. So that's their three actions. And uh, I think that's probably their best, their best bet. They want to, they don't want high pen getting waylaid by black swan. So they're going to put pressure on the other fleet to, to attempt to trade these coins home. So, okay. So, Universal Pirate Swan is, uh, yeah, they're going to go for those coins, try to trade them home because they can't hit High Ping right now anyway. So, they might as well, they got to try to get this going. So, Fog Bank got a five. Okay. That's a really good roll. That's perfect. That could really, that could really help them. Oh, yeah. This is nasty. That really helps. This is a this is a true treasure race. So we're gonna see if she can trade home these coins before Hai Peng can get home her 16. <laughs> this is crazy. Um, but anyway, so so with that fog bank roll, they can hit Bloody Jewel on the way to the island. So that's nice. Because there's no point in whirlpooling. So they're gonna easily get with six S total speed, she can easily get to the island. So and yeah, that was one of the potential harms of uh, having Bloody Jewel come this way by herself was getting waylaid on the way there, but oh well. So finally get to do some shooting. So Black Swan has three S cannons and Bloody Jewel has no defenses or anything. So we get all the black dice and one of the white ones. So all cannons at Bloody Jewel. Uh, I think they'd shoot to sink. I don't really see why not. So just need fours or higher. Oh, whoops. All right. So three hits sunk. The bloody jewel is taken out. And no treasure, so no split. All the crew are gone. So there goes that. So finally had some combat here. And then Micron gives up. I got I never flipped him, but anyway. So he gives his action of Patagonia. The black swan so she wants to dock at an angle where she could maybe run home i don't i guess that probably wouldn't be faster next turn but either way yeah she's gonna dock right there and she's gonna use her explorer to explore this island she's gonna use captain jack sparrow to trade home the five to core du leon for this pirate oarsman that goes to the island. 
and then core uh, is given an explore action targeting the home island and just going to get a plus two on that coin via Maurice Aristide. So now they're at 14. And now the Kawar is going to load this last Pirate Oarsman as a free action. So, and now we can see the writing on the wall that uh, this fleet is going to win, I think. Because all they have to do is trade that coin home and get it plussed up. Yeah. The problem is the high pen can't get home. Um, she doesn't have her speed boosters. So that's a real problem. Because if she didn't unload them, she wouldn't have enough gold to win. So she'd have to make another trip out. But now that she doesn't have them, her max speed is cut in half. Because she doesn't have the boosters. So, all right. So we'll just finish it up here. So ultra abuse. Uh, got high peng coming out of the fog bank with a five. So same result as the other fleet. For them, it's a trash roll. They wanted like a three or a two. There's no whirlpool assist. So I don't think there's anything they can really do. Um, they can't even load that four over there. So they can't get to the whirlpool with one action. I mean, it wouldn't really help anyway. But um, yeah, they have, they have the gold they need. They just can't get it home fast enough. So um, and there's no way they can really, they need gold on the home island to build a fort for it to count for that. So they can't, yeah, yeah, I don't think. I don't think, I don't think there's a way they can make this work. So they can at least try to come home. Yeah. So LS. So now instead of half a move action, that's a full one because she doesn't have the plus L or the plus S from her regular crew assortment. So that's one action, and then Micron for the second. So you can see even if they had the best roll, they'd only be a little bit farther. So they need they need a little bit more speed here. So um okay so that should do it because now on the other turn black swan gonna redock send home this four to core for the last oarsman and she is gonna immediately be given an explore action to unload at the home island which boosts them from 14 up to 20. so they got 14 regular and then three bonuses so they're going to win um, 20 to 0 with the 16 gold on the high peng. It's not in a fort or on their home island. So the high peng for treasure doesn't count towards victory. So unfortunately, even though they were close, the UPS strategy with tr trading coins home instead of having to actually bring it home um, really helps out the Swan fleet here at the end. So, so game one goes to Universal Pirate Swan, 20 to 0. And uh, it was a pretty good game, though. I think it, it was pretty interesting. Definitely some interesting interactions with UTs and exploring and the treasure trading ability. Um, and I think the the uh, Ultra Abuse Fleet is definitely going to change their UT distribution for game two. They're going to, they're probably not going to use any revealers. They're going to take out Pirate Globe and Maps of Alexandria and probably just replace them with uh, Abandoned Crew, most likely. So that'll be interesting. But I think it's just too much of a luck based fleet. So it's pretty gimmicky. Whereas Universal Pirate Swan, they got they got the combat, they got the UPS going on, and uh, they got their treasure, their gold bonuses too. So too much to overcome in this game, but we'll see a game two. And then I'll post that one. Should be sometime next weekend. So thanks again for watching. This was uh, game one between Ultra Abuse and Universal Pirate Swan with the Swan Fleet winning 20 to zero. And uh, stay tuned for more Pirates action. And uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you again in more videos.